This is a short video where we're going to talk about the underlying likelihood maximization process that's going on when we're fitting these nonlinear models. Incidentally, this is very uh, much the same thing that is taking place whenever we are fitting any of our models. The um, in all of these cases what we're looking for are parameter estimates that we're getting are what are called maximum likelihood estimates. So the context of this video in fact works for all of the model fitting that we've done so far. So just a reminder we will start by taking a look at the species area curve that I put used in the other video. So we have a very simple power function, c times the area raised to the power z, gives us species richness, and we're going to start at these particular starting values. Once we fit our parameter, we can plot out, or fit the model, we can plot out the range of likelihoods that we get for any particular combination of the parameters c and z. Our starting values were here at this triangle. The final maximum likelihood estimate was here at this circle. And the color scheme is such that it's white at the point at which we have a, basically a 95 percent confidence ellipse around our parameter estimates, around this maximum likelihood estimate. As you can see, the farther away we get from the maximum likelihood estimate, the worse the likelihood gets, up in this corner as well. The steepness of that likelihood surface is different in different directions, so if we go in this direction, it's actually pretty flat um, compared to going in this direction. And it's this non-uniformity in the likelihood surface that creates correlations between our parameters. If we were to try and move away from the maximum likelihood surface, uh, we can most easily do it in a, a direction that is negatively correlated between those two parameters, right? So a reduction in C is compensated for the most by an increase in z because of the direction of the likelihood surface. And this is again the same principle operating for all of the models that we've been looking at. Let's think about the actual process that's going on when we're trying to get from our starting point to our finishing point. And I'm going to use a different starting point because otherwise things go too quickly for this particular surface, quite well behaved, quite smooth in, in both directions. So if I start way over here, on the first iteration of the algorithm that's trying to maximize the likelihood, what it's doing is identifying which direction does the likelihood surface decrease and how fast. And then it takes a step to this point, and then it reevaluates the likelihood surface and takes another step, which basically takes it directly to the uh, value for the maximum likelihood estimate. It actually does bounce around slightly for a couple more iterations, but it only takes four iterations to go from our starting value to our maximum likelihood estimate. And again, something like this algorithm is being used for mi our mixed effects models, for generalized additive models, for even generalized linear models use an iterative algorithm that um, starts with a or starts with a starting point and then works its way systematically step by step towards the maximum likelihood estimates. Let's go back to a slightly more complicated model. So now we're going to look at our functional response models and in particular the type 3 model We'll set c equal to zero. If I estimate this just using NLS, so I've got prey consumed per four hours. These are the um, paramecium. My predators are the 
uh, flatworms. So I have different prey densities and we're, we're going up. It's actually, for this model, a little bit more difficult to figure out what the starting values ought to be. And when we plot out the likelihood surface, we can kind of see why. It's not sort of nicely quadratic the way the species area curve uh, surface was. In fact, it's got a kind of weird curvature to it. So if we're starting off with our um, starting values a long ways away in a weird direction, um, it can actually be quite difficult to get from the starting point to the maximum likelihood estimate, or perhaps even impossible. In this case, the gradient on our likelihood surface takes quite a bit longer. It takes about 12 iterations to get from this starting value to our maximum likelihood estimate. And you can see that it's far from jumping in a straight line. So steps from here to here, then takes aim again, then again, and so on, until it finds a good value, uh, the, ma the best value, the flattest part of the likelihood surface. If we zoom in to those few points, we can see a little bit better what's going on. So here's the step from the second point to the third iteration to the fourth iteration. Then it jumps past the maximum likelihood value fifth iteration, turns around, jumps back again, missing the maximum likelihood estimate, jumps back in the opposite direction, and eventually homes in on the point where the maximum likelihood estimate is found. So that's maximum likelihood estimation for nonlinear models. Almost always when you run into convergence problems, it's because the surface of the likelihood is um, not nicely shaped and there are, you know, it can take a while to figure out exactly what's going on and how to uh, work your way around it. The more parameters involved in your model, the more complicated looking that particular likelihood surface is going to be.